Hey everyone, this is Anam Chahar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be discussing the summary of the chapter Landscape of the Soul from the book Hornbill of Class 11. Let's begin. The main theme of the chapter is about arts, various forms of art. The chapter is about how different the Chinese art form is from the European art form. The second important topic in this chapter is outsider art. We'll discuss about it in detail along with an example. So in this chapter, the writer contrasts the two forms of art, Chinese art and European art by using two different stories. Firstly, let's talk about Chinese one. It's about a Chinese painter, Wu Daozi who lived in 8th century. An emperor asked Wu Daozi to decorate a wall in his palace. Wu Daozi made a beautiful painting. Upon seeing the wall painting, the emperor admired the wonderful scene. He only noticed the outer appearance of the painting. He saw mountains, trees, forests, waterfalls, clouds and men on hilly path, birds flying in the open sky. These are the things that he noticed in the painting, only the outer appearance. Just then, the painter pointed at a cave which was there at the foot of the mountain. So he pointed at a cave which was there in the painting at the foot of the mountain. He drew the emperor's, att emperor's attention to the cave. He said that a spirit lives inside the cave. The painter told the emperor that he knows the way within the cave. He knows the path to enter this cave and it is so beautiful inside. But obviously the cave was just in the painting. It wasn't real but still he said that he knows the path to enter this cave. He told the emperor that he will take him inside. The painter entered the cave and the entrance closed behind him. As soon as the painter clapped his hands, the painting on the wall was gone and so was the painter. Both the painting and the painter disappeared. The emperor stood there astonished. He was shocked. He didn't understand what just happened. So, what's the significance of this story? Well, it tells about a spiritual journey. This shows that Chinese art is spiritual in nature. Please try to understand this chapter properly because it's a little complicated. So, this particular Chinese incident shows that, you know, Chinese art is spiritual in nature. It's not just a simple landscape it's not just a simple painting having mountains and rivers etc it also contains the spirit of the artist he draws the painting with his full heart and spirit so in a way it contains the spirit of the artist the feelings of the artists uh, of the artist are hidden in the painting the landscape, the painting shows the way to the artist's soul, his spirit. The spirit that the painter talked about in the story which lived inside the cave, that spirit was none other than his own spirit. A common man only sees the physical aspect. He only sees the visual aspect which is visible to the eye. He fails to understand the real meaning of the painting. He cannot understand the feelings of the artist, the spirit of the artist, the heart of the artist. Only a person with a keen eye, only an artist can understand these feelings and these concepts. Only he knows the way within. He knows the way within means only he can understand these feelings. Another story is about European art form. Once upon a time, 
a master blacksmith fell in love with a painter's daughter blacksmith means lohar who works with iron the painter the girl's father he did not approve of him because of his profession the blacksmith sneaked into his painting studio and painted a fly on the painter's latest uh, panel when the painter came and he saw a fly sitting on his canvas his painting panel he tried to run it off he tried to fly it away it seemed so real the fly seemed so real that he did not realize for a while that the fly wasn't a real one it was just a painting the painter was quite impressed now this concept this particular uh, you know type of art is called delicate realism delicate realism means uh, when an artist draws something which seems to be real it is called realism so the painter was obviously impressed and he accepted him as a trainee in his studio the blacksmith married the painter's daughter and later became one of the most famous painters of his time these stories reveal the difference between chinese and european art forms now there is a fundamental difference of aim also the aim of these two artists is totally different firstly in europe the aim of an artist a painter is to achieve a perfect illusionistic likeness means delicate realism he just wants to draw something which you know gives an illusion which appears uh, to be real while in china the aim is to capture the essence of inner life and spirit the aim is not to draw something which appears to be real which gives an illusion but the aim is to capture the inner life and spirit the aim is to capture the feelings of the painter the chinese painter doesn't mean to reproduce an actual view he doesn't copy a figure on his canvas his landscape is not a real one but a conceptual one a spiritual one there is a deep concept there is a deep feeling and emotion which is hidden inside the painting which is hidden inside his landscape in fact the painter's spirit his heart and soul is inside the painting so we can say that the chinese painting is a spiritual one in this landscape you don't have to enter necessarily from one point entering from one point means you don't have to uh, you know you don't have to look at it from a specific point of view you can have your uh, you're free to develop your own perception about it you are free to see what you want to see the painter gives the viewer liberty freedom to enter from any point of uh, enter from any point and travel in it means he gives the freedom to see whatever he wants to see he gives the viewer the freedom to develop his own perception about it he can enter from any point he can travel through any path what what does it mean well it means that the painter gives the freedom like i said he gives the freedom and liberty to the viewer to look at his painting and develop his own perception about it so i hope this concept is clear it is important the style of art the style and art of a western painter is quite different he doesn't uh, give the viewer any freedom a western painter believes in figurative painting as in uh, to copy something on his canvas and he doesn't want to give liberty freedom to the viewer to look at the painting from any angle like i said he just copies something on his canvas and he wants to create an illusion he wants to uh, just uh, you know make his painting look real 
he wants the viewer to see exactly what he wants to express if he's drawing a fly he just wants you to see the fly if he's drawing a mountain a woman he just wants you to see the women he doesn't want you to develop your own uh, perception or point of view about it so basically uh, one can say that a western painter wants the viewer to look at his painting from his eyes from a specific angle he wants the viewer to look at the painting from his point of view not uh, the viewer's own point of view now we have discussed both types of art forms in detail and we can now say that uh, the chinese art form has broader dimension as compared to european art form it's not just a plain landscape chinese painting is not just a painting it's just not a plain landscape in fact it's a spiritual and conceptual space so obviously it requires active participation of the viewer both physically and mentally because obviously uh, the the viewer has to devote himself he has to use his brains he has to use his mind his heart his feelings to understand the painting so a chinese painting a chinese art form requires active participation of the viewer moving on another chinese concept that the writer has talked about in this chapter is sanctuary sanctuary is nothing new but a landscape sanctuary means a landscape a painting the literal meaning of this chinese word sanctuary is mountain water mountain water mountain and water are two complementary poles mountain is yang and water is yin complementary poles means they complete each other they just complement each other each one of them is incomplete without the other mountain reaches vertically towards the sky but the water remains horizontal resting on the earth mountain is stable it doesn't move but water moves continuously mountain is warm but water is cool mountain is dry but water is wet so obviously both these things are very different from one another but still they complement each other they are different but still they are incomplete without each other one cannot exist without the other mountain yang is a masculine force masculine means man like and water which is called yin is a feminine one feminine means woman like they complement each other they complete each other creation takes place through their interaction without their interaction nothing new can be created so water alone cannot create anything land or mountain alone cannot create anything when water and mountain they come in contact then creation takes place for example plantations trees you know tree needs soil and it also needs water so it's not like only one a particular element either mountain or uh, you know water can sustain the life so both these uh, things are equally important they make each other complete and when they interact then creation takes place this concept is called taoism so basically you can say that taoism says that mountain and water they are two different things they are two different poles but they are incomplete without each other because without their interaction if they do they do not come in each other's contact then nothing new can uh, you know originate so this concept is called taoism the writer also talks about a third element the middle void void means the empty space where this interaction takes place so like i said to create something new mountain needs to come in contact with water but how will they come in contact with each other they needs uh, both of them you know they need some space to interact no so there is this open space there is this sky this open space this middle void this empty space 
is also an important element. The empty space where mountain comes in contact with water. So this third element is also very very important. This empty space, this middle void. This is also very important. Obviously, if see if you are standing at one place and you need to uh, move to uh, you know the other, so you need some space to travel in. No, you cannot move if there there is no free space. So for movement, for interaction, this free space is very important. So three elements are talked about uh, here: water, mountain, and empty space. All these three elements are very important. So uh, I'm repeating, like I said, nothing new can be created without the interaction of these two elements, which are mountain and water. And this interaction cannot happen without the third element, which is the void, the empty space. So in a Chinese landscape, this empty space, this unpainted space in Chinese landscape signifies the void. So when you see uh, a Chinese painting, you will see a landscape like mountains, birds, water, rivers. So the empty space is called void. Two concepts are covered here. First is difference between Chinese and European art forms. Second is century in which we talked about mountain, water and empty space. Now the last concept in this chapter is outsider art. It is also called raw art or art brut. This art form was initiated by French painter Jean de Buffet in 1940. This concept is very simple. Outsider art or raw art as the name suggests. Uh, so this art is described as the art of the untrained artists. Outsider means untrained. Those artists who have not uh, received any formal training yet show great talent and artistic insight means those artists those people who do not have any kind of formal training but still they are artists they have great talent and they have uh, you know made beautiful things this form of art raw art outsider art did not have a very encouraging beginning People did not recognize such artists as real artists. But now, this art form is also very popular and many outsider artists have received international acclaim and praise. One such example is Nek Chand, an untutored genius. Who was Nek Chand? Nek Chand is known for creating raw garden at Chandigarh and uh, recognized as India's greatest ambassador of outsider art. His raw garden sculpture, Woman by the Waterfall, was featured on the cover page of anniversary issue of a very famous magazine, Raw Vision, in 2005. He was also honored by the Swiss Commission of, uh, for UNESCO for his outstanding work. Nek Chand is not alive now. He is now dead, but he was a very humble person. He was very modest and he always said that his greatest reward, his greatest achievement was seeing people walking through his garden and enjoying his creations. So yeah, that's all about it. I hope you must have understood the lesson. If you like the video, if you found it useful, then please subscribe to my channel and you can also leave comments. Thank you.